What if someone told you that life actually creates the universe? We're all used to the fact that the universe exists outside of us and was created with the Big Bang. But what if, in reality, it's us who create not just houses and cars, but the whole world? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, let's discuss this fascinating theory. For centuries, there's been one way of thinking about the universe. It's brought us amazing discoveries and inventions that have changed our lives. But guess what? This model might be running out of steam. Scientists say that the universe was created from the Big Bang. Then, it was just a bunch of lifeless particles bouncing around until they started creating stars, then planets, and finally us. The current model is logical and well thought out, but the problem is it's still full of unexplained things. For example, it can't explain how life came to be in the first place. Sure, we can understand how life evolved and changed over time, but the real mystery is how it all began. When exactly did we humans become conscious? How do a bunch of molecules in a brain create our thoughts and experiences? That's a real head-scratcher. And even if we put the life and consciousness stuff aside, the current model falls short in explaining the basics of our universe. We know about the Big Bang, but where did this Big Bang come from? How can something come from nothing? It's a great puzzle, and we don't have the answer yet. Well, here comes Dr. Robert Lanza and his wild idea called biocentrism. In 2007, he wrote a scientific article about how biology could join forces with quantum physics. It was so cool that two years later, Lanza and his friend Bob Berman wrote a book that expanded the ideas from the article. So what does Lanza actually believe? Well, he basically says that everything we perceive is within our minds. That everything, the whole universe, is all in your head. Of course, this idea isn't new at all, but Lanza tries to combine it with astrobiology and quantum physics to explain how exactly life creates the world instead of the other way around. His theory says that biology is the boss of the universe. He thinks that if scientists want to come up with a theory of everything, they need to start with biology as the foundation. According to him, our consciousness plays a big role in how we see the world. Space and time aren't real things, but more like how our animal brains understand stuff. Lanza also says biocentrism helps explain a lot of quantum paradoxes and puzzles. He even thinks that it might be a better way to bring all of physics together than Einstein's famous theory of relativity. So, let's take a look at seven important ideas in biocentrism. The first one says that reality is connected to our consciousness, and what we see depends on us looking at it. We've got this idea that the universe exists on its own, even when we're not looking at it. If you have the kitchen in your house, the kitchen is always there, right? Well, not exactly. Our eyes capture tiny packets of light, but the real perception of colors, shapes, and movement happens in the back of our brains. Everything we see is because of light bouncing off objects and interacting with our brain. So without our brains, the kitchen would be just a bunch of random particles. In other words, when you're not in the kitchen, there's no real kitchen there. It's just a bunch of possibilities, like a shimmering swarm of matter and energy. It's pretty challenging to think about, isn't it? But to truly understand the universe, we need to go beyond our habitual ways of thinking. We need to embrace a viewpoint that's simpler, yet more demanding than what we're used to. We need to look at the world in a whole new way. Next, the second and third ideas say that particles behave differently when we watch them. Sounds creepy, right? But it's actually true. We observe this phenomenon many times in many experiments in quantum mechanics. Yes, particles actually change their behavior if they know they're being observed. It gets even crazier. Some particles can even instantly influence each other, no matter how far apart they are. It's like little atoms have a secret connection that defies space and time. This is why Lanza believes that bringing the observer into the picture, like us humans with our thoughts and perceptions, can help us understand things better. He thinks that the observer is the missing puzzle piece that can help us find a way to bring all the laws of the universe together. 
The fourth idea says that consciousness is super important, and without it, things get all fuzzy. Like we said, everything is intertwined, and there's no separate universe out there that's not connected to living things. Biocentrism suggests that the external world, everything we see, actually depends on us, the biological creatures. We're not just passive observers with clear windows to the world. In fact, without us interacting with the world, it's like the universe isn't really there. Just like the kitchen disappears when we're not there, and the universe is all about how we experience it. Reality is a dance between us and the world. It's a whole new way of understanding everything. The fifth idea points out that the universe seems to be just right for life to exist. There are over 200 things in the universe that have to be just right for life and consciousness to exist. If the Big Bang had been even slightly stronger, everything would have zoomed by too quickly for galaxies and life to form. That means no us! And if the forces of nature, like gravity, and the strong nuclear force were tweaked even a little, atoms wouldn't hold together, stars wouldn't ignite, and we would be left with plain vanilla hydrogen everywhere. Of course, there's many theories on why this could be the case. We could also look at this phenomenon the other way. It's not that things were made this way specifically for us, but our existence is a result of things being this way. We're just the result of particle movements and certain conditions. Biocentrism, however, has a more fun way to look at it. Life creates the universe. The universe and its parameters are a reflection of the logic of our existence as living beings. And finally, the sixth and seventh ideas say that space and time are not things, but tools our animal brains use. Think about it for a moment. Does time really exist? Well, the reality of time is a bit shaky. According to biocentrism, time is simply our way of making sense of the world, a tool for understanding. It's not some external force. Our mind weaves together snapshots of information, creating the illusion of time. So when we perceive time passing, it's just our human perception at work. And what about space? In our daily lives, we think of space as a vast container without walls. But in reality, space is full, not empty. There's no fixed measure of distance anywhere. You believe that you're far away from your kitchen, but everything around us is just a bunch of atoms almost without any empty space in it. Well, there you have the basic ideas of biocentrism. In his books, Lanza explores these ideas very deeply and tries to answer philosophical questions. Like if death is just an illusion, or if plants are aware of things. They even talk about whether machines can ever become conscious. Some people aren't sure if this theory can be proven right or wrong. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to test it right now. But Lanza hopes that in the future we can do cool experiments, like huge quantum superposition thingies, or either prove or disprove his theory. Until then, it's more like a cool idea than anything. No matter which theory you prefer, one thing is clear. We live in a truly peculiar world. So let's keep exploring it and discover new amazing things.